Hey everybody, welcome back to Jim's Garage. In the last video, I showed you Link Warden. It's a way to create bookmarks, but not only that, create snapshots of that website when you created that bookmark. That's great because of a thing called link rot, whereby links may expire, content of that page may change, and thus having an excerpt of that page is really useful for your archiving. Now, when I released that video, a lot of you spoke about Hoarder, which is another product in the same vein. Now, I'm gonna keep this video short because of that, but I am gonna talk about what sets it apart. Now, Hoarder has into it AI. That can be a good thing or a bad thing, depending on how you look at it. But with Hoarder, it integrates with OpenAI, such that if you create a bookmark and you create some images off that, i.e. those JPEGs, those PDFs, etc., you can use the AI from OpenAI to create tags and summarize what's in that website. Depending on whether you want to use that or not, that could be a handy feature. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to deploy Hoarder, how to tie it up with an OpenAI key, and then give you a quick overview of the actual user interface. Let's get into it. So heading over to my Docker VM is pretty straightforward to get this up and running. We've got a Docker Compose file and a .env file. So if we look through this, we've basically got three containers for Hoarder itself, and then we've got some environment variables here, which I'll go through in due course. So starting off with the Docker Compose file, the first thing we need is the web user interface. So this is kind of Hoarder itself and the bit that you'll be interacting with. Here we can set the release version that we want, we can create a volume. So I've just created a volume here because that was in the instructions, but you could simply substitute this for a bind mount if you wanted to. I generally recommend that because it makes access to those files much simpler. I've commented out the ports because as always, I'm running this behind a reverse proxy, which you can see down here. But if you're not using a reverse proxy or using a different reverse proxy, simply delete the labels, put the ports back in, and you'll be able to access this on port 3000. Now, getting into the environment variables, we have the Mealy Search and the Chrome containers. Those are referenced down below, and we'll have a look at those. So the address for that is basically because of DNS within Docker itself. We can put the container name here and the port it expects, and the same for the Chrome. Now, the key here that's a bit different and sets it apart from Link Warden is the Open API. So here you need to go and grab your OpenAI API key. There are instructions on the website for that, but if you simply Google OpenAI API key, it's gonna take you to the following page. So here you can see that I've logged into my OpenAPI account and I simply created a new API key. Now, this won't actually work because I'm not a paid user. So do bear in mind that this isn't free. You will need a subscription to OpenAI in order to use this but there are some statistics on the website for Hoarder and it is pretty cheap. You can basically make hundreds of bookmarks for less than a dollar if those are accurate. Anyway, let's get back to the deployment. So as I'm running this through my reverse proxy, I need to put this container onto my proxy network. That was created previously in my traffic video and you may have a different name for that network. Whatever it is, just specify it here. I've also created a bespoke network called Hoarder just for all of these containers to sit on. And that's how this container can access this container simply by referencing its container name. The labels then for the container are pretty straightforward. We're simply gonna load balance this to port 3000. Next, we get onto the Chrome container. Now this container is running headless as is typical in a lot of developer environments. And I think this uses the Chrome container to generate some of the images which are then used within the Hoarder application. Do let me know if I've got that wrong. But effectively, we wanna stick this then onto the same network as Hoarder so that it can communicate and those functions will work. And then lastly, we have the Mealy search, which is the bit which is gonna do the AI searching using OpenAI. Now again, that's gonna be on the same network as Hoarder, and it's gonna require some variables from the .env file, and it's gonna store some of its data again in a Docker volume. So if we wanna get this up and running, we need to jump into our terminal. We're gonna to go to the file that contains the Docker Compose file, and then we should be able to just spin this up. So to do that, I'm gonna do a sudo docker compose of dash D. That should go away now and pull the containers, configure this application, and hopefully by the end of it, we're in a position where we can access it through the web UI, provided that you've added a DNS entry to your DNS resolver. I'll see you on the other side. 
So now that's completed, let me pull up a new incognito tab and we'll access this web page. So heading over to hoarder.jimsgarage.co.uk, we should be presented with the login page or for us, it's the sign up page. We haven't got an account, so we're gonna have to sign up. So create a username, specify an email address and then add a password and hit sign up. Once you're ready, we should be then greeted with the dashboard. So you can see much like in the previous example of Link Warden, there's a really nice and intuitive user interface whereby the default page it is just as simple as copying a link and dragging or pasting it into here. You can even put an image in, which is pretty handy. If we wanna go into the settings, top right, have a look in here. We can have a look at the user settings. So this is for our active user. And there's also other settings that you might want to get into on the admin settings. So you can do things like how you actually want this to function, i.e. what its crawling behavior is, regenerate AI tags, all of those sorts of things. And it's great to see that in here. You've also got the user management as well because you can share this with multiple users. If we go back to the user settings, we can have a look at things like the AI. In here, you can specify the prompts that you want it to actually use when assessing your content, i.e. your bookmarks. You can set up some RSS feed subscriptions as well, and you can also manage the import and export of your existing bookmarks for backup, which is really nice to see. So you can import things if you've already got them. Plus, you can, all important for your backups, export the data from Hoarder itself. Lastly, we can have a look at the API keys, and obviously here you can manage your API keys for your OpenAI accounts, etc. If we go back to the app, let's just go to a website and spin this up. Now, do remember as well, much like with Link Warden, there is a handy Chrome extension, so you can embed this into your browser. Plus, there are also mobile applications, so if you're out and about on your mobile, you can make use of Hoarder itself as well to do all of the same things that you would with all the AI, etc. when you're out and about. So I've just headed over to theverge.com for an example. So if we go back into Hoarder and we now paste this in here and then we click save, it should go away now and scan that website. It should build the images and it will do any AI generation in a minute if you want it to. So if we click on this, it should take us to the actual live website. That's great. If we go back and we click the expansion, it should expand this bookmark and then it should show what's actually cached here from what it pulled down. And if you click on the drop down button here, you can actually see the screenshot it created when it did it. So here is a screenshot of the front page of that website. Sometimes I have found that it cuts off pages. So here, for example, it hasn't got the entire page, but I suspect that's probably hit and miss dependent on how the page is actually constructed. It does the same thing when you're in Chrome as well. If you've ever done a control I, control P and tried to do a full size screenshot, different websites behave differently. And I suspect with Chrome Headless, that's what this is doing. It's sending a command to Chrome Headless. It's saying, go to this page, do a full screen snapshot, and then send it back. And thus, if it doesn't work in Chrome, it's probably not gonna give you that full image here. Now the next bit, and sadly I can't demonstrate it because I haven't actually got a paid account with OpenAI, is to summarize with AI. So if you click this button, it should go away, use your API key, and then come back with a summary. So it should tag it, and it should give a brief description of what's on the website. Now you saw an error pop up down here, and if I go into my logs for the Docker container, it will just be saying that the API key that I've got has no credit left on it, therefore I can't use the API. Now some good news around that is looking through the documentation, it does state that it supports Olama, which if you've seen in my previous video on how to set that up, is a self-hosted open AI. So you could tag this using Olama itself. I find results with Olama are a little bit hit and miss, but as with kind of any AI, the bigger the data set, the more mature, i.e. the longer you wait, those results should become better, i.e. they should be more accurate. But generally speaking, I've always found that OpenAI is better, but you've obviously got the confines around what you can and cannot use on it, and you've also got those privacy concerns around they'll be tracking everything you do use with it. Anyway, that was a quick whistle-stop tour of Hoarder. Let me know if that's something that you're going to use and whether you think that AI integration is worth it over something like Link Warden. I'm going to trial it out. I'll probably connect this up to Olama and see where I get to. I'll probably do some social media posts around what I think of the output of that. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this video, hit the like, hit the subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody.